Hey there, in this video, we'll take a look at fringe benefit examples that you can implement in your organization. My name is Josh, I'm the founder of HR University, and this lesson is for HR professionals who want to ensure that they give their employees the best benefit packages. And before we dive into fringe benefit examples, make sure to go ahead and subscribe to our channel, and that way you don't miss any of our lessons on how to become a great HR professional. Now let's dive in. So fringe benefits are compensation or perks given to employees in addition to their regular salary. As an employer or HR professional, learning about fringe benefits lets you understand how these perks impact your business's budget and taxes. And fringe benefits can be either monetary or non-monetary. And monetary fringe benefits include health insurance, vacation pay, and retirement plans. On the other hand, non-monetary fringe benefits include company cars, lodging on your business premises, free tickets, employee stock options, and things like gym memberships. However, certain fringe benefits are required by law, while others are discretionary. And before diving into the examples in more detail, let's understand the perks associated with fringe benefits, both for the organization and employees. So fringe benefits result in better public perception, better brand identity, and market competition for the organization. As for employees, they experience increased happiness, engagement, retention, and motivation. Now let's explore the most common fringe benefit examples here. So we have bonuses, paid vacations, and athletic club memberships, and other examples include health resort expenses, housing allowance, educational assistance, employee discounts, accident and health benefits, and retirement plans. In addition, we also have group term life insurance, workers' compensation insurance, unemployment insurance, and family and medical leave. Furthermore, you also need to offer disability insurance. Finally, we have Social Security and Medicare. And first comes the bonuses, the one-time payment you offer to your employees in addition to the regular salary. And these extra employee benefits are not part of the employee's regular salary. Moreover, they show your employees that you appreciate their contributions to the company. In addition to bonuses, you can also offer paid vacations to your employees. And paid vacation is an excellent way to show your employees that you appreciate their contributions to the company and all the work that they're putting in. And employees can often use paid vacation days for any purpose such as leisure, travel, or personal errands. It helps improve your employees' mental health, work-life balance, and productivity. Moreover, these benefits also reduce stress levels and improve employee morale. And we have athletic club membership, which is another type of fringe benefit that allows your employees to use the facilities of an athletic club at a discounted rate. And this benefit also helps improve the health and well-being of your employees. Moreover, it also helps to relieve stress, improve your employees' work-life balance, and increase productivity. If you want to cover health resort expenses for your employees, you can reimburse them for their health care costs. And health resorts offer various health and wellness services such as massages, fitness classes, and spa treatments. Remember that covering health resort expenses can be costly though. Another common taxable fringe benefit is housing allowance. You offer a housing allowance or reimburse your employees for the costs renting or buying a house. And this benefit helps your employees save money on housing, especially when it comes to things like moving to a new city, or maybe they're looking to grow their family and they need to move into a new place. So it can really help them find a comfortable place to live and provides them with more opportunity in life for their personal well-being. And as an employer, you can also offer educational assistance. You can reimburse employees for their educational expenses. So this type of fringe benefit is non-taxable and helps your employees enhance their skills and knowledge. Not only are you helping your employees with professional development, but also can increase efficiency inside the company with this new extra knowledge that your employees are obtaining. Another non-taxable fringe benefit is employee discounts. Employee discounts are a great way to show your appreciation to your employees. And discounts allow employees to purchase companies' goods and services at a discounted price. And discounts on goods and services can include anything from clothing to travel, depending on what your company provides. And the next option that also falls under non-taxable fringe benefits is accident and health benefits. And these benefits cover the cost of medical expenses. You can also offer health savings accounts to your employees. However, they are only available to employees with high deductible health plans. And some examples of accident and health benefits are dental, eye care, prescription drugs, and health savings accounts. Moreover, you can also offer long-term care and short-term disability insurance as fringe benefits. And employers can offer employees retirement plans such as 401ks and pension plans as a fringe benefit. 
And such plans free your employees from the financial burden of retirement and allows them to save even more as they work for you. And then we have group term life insurance, which is another example of a non-taxable fringe benefit. Companies offer different policies with different coverage amounts with this. And you can decide what you want to provide your employees based on your budget and what you feel is reasonable. Moreover, you can also choose to increase or decrease the coverage amount depending on what makes sense to support your employees and give them incentive to grow with you. Now let's explore a few of the legally required fringe benefits here. So one of the most important types is workers' compensation insurance, which benefits employees who are injured or sick due to their job. The state ensures that workers injured on the job receive compensation to help them cover their medical expenses and lost wages. However, the compensation provided by employers is limited and it varies from state to state. And workers' compensation covers self-insurance and state-run insurance. And self-insurance helps injured or sick employees pay their medical bills. It also covers a portion of their lost salaries. On the other hand, state-run insurance is an insurance program run by the state government. It covers all businesses in the state and compensates employees who are injured or who are ill due to their job. And the second type of legally required fringe benefit is unemployment insurance which involves employers' contributions through payroll taxes. The unemployment insurance program provides benefits to employees who have lost their job to cover their living expenses while looking for a new job. And the state government administers the unemployment insurance program. And the cost of benefits and the eligibility requirements vary from state to state. And it's for part-time and full-time employees. And then we have family and medical leave, which covers employees who need to take time off to care for a family member. The Family and Medical Leave Act requires employers to provide employees with 12 weeks of unpaid leave per year. For private sector employers, the company must have at least 50 employees for this act. In addition, the employee must work for at least 12 months for the company to qualify. And employees are eligible for this type of paid leave in case of severe health conditions or pregnancy. And this type of leave also includes military caregiver leave. And military caregiver leave allows employees to take time off from work to care for a family member injured while serving in the military. And disability insurance is also a legally required fringe benefit. This type of insurance benefits employees who cannot work because of a disability and offers half the employee's salary for a certain period. This fringe benefit is not mandatory in all states. The structure of disability insurance is much like that of medical insurance. And employees can pay for the coverage with their money or the employer can cover the expenses. And there we have it. We just went over the different types of common fringe benefit examples. If you feel like you have a better idea of some of the fringe benefits that you can go ahead and implement in your organization, make sure to like this video and subscribe to our channel. And that way you can keep up to date with all of our lessons on how to run a great organization and become a great HR professional. And again, my name is Josh. I'm the founder of HR University and I'll go ahead and see you in some of our following lessons. Cheers.